Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving headfirst into the exciting world of ethical hacking with 10 beginner-friendly projects that will have you feeling like a cybersecurity pro in no time. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on more awesome cybersecurity and ethical hacking content. But first, a super important disclaimer. Everything we're talking about today is strictly for educational purposes only. Ethical hacking is all about responsible disclosure, which means always working within legal boundaries and never trying to harm someone else's systems. All right, let's kick things off with our first project network scanning using Nmap. Now, Nmap is like the Swiss Army knife of networking tools. It's incredibly powerful and lets you see what devices are connected to your network, what ports they have open, and even what services are running on them. Think of it like taking an x-ray of your network. Knowing what's on your network is the first step in securing it. You might discover devices you didn't even know were there or find vulnerabilities you need to address. With Nmap, you can scan your home network, your office network, or even a simulated network environment. And the best part, Nmap is super user friendly. There are tons of online resources and tutorials to help you get started. So what are you waiting for? Fire up your terminal, install Nmap, and let's start scanning. Let's talk about something we all use every day, Wi-Fi. We'll test our Wi-Fi security using tools like AircrackEng and WPS WPA Tester. We'll explore Wi-Fi security protocols like WEP, WPA, and WPA2, see how these protocols work and their strengths and weaknesses, understand how attackers think to better protect your network. We'll also discuss creating strong passwords, so grab your laptop and let's see how secure your network is. Dive into password cracking with John the Ripper. Ethical hacking is about responsible disclosure and staying legal. Password hashes are scrambled versions of your passwords. Brute force attacks try every possible key until one works. John the Ripper is our trusty sidekick. It tests password strength by cracking hashes, use it safely and responsibly, emphasizing ethics. The goal is to show the importance of strong, unique passwords. Get ready to put on your hacker hat because we're about to explore the world of website vulnerability scanning. In this chapter, we'll learn how to use tools like OWASP, Zap, and Nikto to scan websites for common security weaknesses. Think of these tools as our virtual magnifying glasses, helping us uncover hidden vulnerabilities that attackers could exploit. We'll be on the lookout for things like SQL injection vulnerabilities, cross-site scripting, and even open directories that could expose sensitive information. Don't worry, we won't be exploiting any of these vulnerabilities ourselves. We'll be focusing on identifying them and understanding how they could be used by attackers. Remember, ethical hacking is all about responsible disclosure, so we'll also discuss how to report these vulnerabilities to website owners so they can fix them and improve their security. By the end of this chapter, you'll have a solid understanding of how website vulnerability scanning works and how you can use these tools to help make the Internet a safer place. Hold on to your hats, folks, because we're about to dive into the world of SQL injection. Now, before you start sweating, let me assure you that we'll be doing all of this in a safe and controlled environment using a tool called Dam Vulnerable Web App, or DVWA for short. It's like a digital playground designed specifically for practicing ethical hacking techniques. We'll be using another tool called SQL Map to simulate SQL injection attacks. This will help us understand how attackers can exploit vulnerable web applications to bypass authentication, steal data, and even take control of entire systems. Don't worry, I'll be with you every step of the way, explaining the process in detail and showing you exactly how SQL injection works. We'll also discuss how to prevent these attacks by implementing proper security measures. This chapter is all about understanding the mechanics of SQL injection so you can better protect your own web applications and data from real-world attackers. So buckle up, grab your keyboard, and let's explore the fascinating world of SQL injection. All right, time to get our hands dirty with a bit of coding. In this chapter, we're going to build our very own keylogger using Python or C++. Now, before you start thinking about spying on your roommate, let's be crystal clear. Building a keylogger is a serious endeavor with significant ethical implications. 
Keyloggers can be used for malicious purposes like stealing passwords and sensitive information. However, they can also be used for legitimate reasons like monitoring employee activity or parental control. We'll be building a very basic keylogger to understand how they work, how they can be detected, and most importantly, how to protect yourself from them. We'll discuss the legal and ethical ramifications of using keyloggers and emphasize the importance of obtaining explicit consent before monitoring anyone's keystrokes. This chapter is for educational purposes only, and we strongly advise against using this knowledge for any illegal or unethical activities. Hold on to your hats, folks, because we're about to dive into the world of phishing. Now, before you start thinking about scamming your friends, let me assure you that we'll be doing all of this in a safe and controlled environment. We'll be using a tool called the Social Engineering Toolkit, or SET for short, to create our very own phishing lures. Think of these lures as digital traps designed to trick unsuspecting users into giving up their sensitive information. We'll explore different phishing techniques, from creating fake websites that look identical to legitimate ones to crafting convincing emails that trick people into clicking on malicious links. Don't worry, I'll be with you every step of the way, explaining the process in detail and showing you exactly how phishing attacks work. We'll also discuss how to spot phishing attempts and how to protect yourself from falling victim to these scams. All right, let's crank things up a notch and explore the world of hash cracking with Hashcat. Now, before you envision yourself cracking super secret government codes, let's be realistic. Hashcat is an incredibly powerful tool, but we'll be focusing on understanding the concepts behind hash cracking rather than trying to break unbreakable encryption. We'll be targeting older hashing algorithms like MD5 and SHA-1, which are known to be vulnerable. Our goal is to demonstrate how these algorithms work why they're no longer considered secure, and why it's crucial to use modern robust hashing algorithms for protecting sensitive data. Hashcat will be our weapon of choice for this mission. We'll learn how to use it to crack these older hashes and discuss the importance of using strong, unique passwords to make cracking nearly impossible. Remember, ethical hacking is all about responsible disclosure and staying within legal boundaries. We'll emphasize the importance of using these tools ethically and responsibly throughout the chapter. So grab your digital crowbar and let's crack some hashes. Hold on tight because we're about to enter the shadowy world of man in the middle MITM attacks. Now, before you start eyeing your neighbor's Wi-Fi with suspicion, let's be clear. Performing MITM attacks on unsuspecting victims is illegal and unethical. We'll be simulating a MITM attack in a controlled environment using tools like Wireshark and Ettercap to understand how attackers can intercept network traffic, potentially stealing sensitive information like passwords, credit card details, and even entire conversations. Think of it like eavesdropping on a conversation, except instead of listening in on a phone call, we're peeking at the data flowing between devices on a network. We'll also discuss how to detect and protect against MITM attacks, emphasizing the importance of using secure Wi-Fi networks, avoiding public Wi-Fi hotspots whenever possible, and using a VPN to encrypt your internet traffic. This chapter is all about raising awareness about MITM attacks and empowering you with the knowledge to protect yourself from becoming a victim. Get ready to unleash your inner ethical hacker because we're diving into the world of penetration testing with Metasploit. Now, before you start planning your next big heist, let's be crystal clear. Penetration testing, or pen testing for short, is all about simulating real-world attacks in a controlled environment to identify vulnerabilities before the bad guys can exploit them. Think of it like hiring a professional burglar to try and break into your house to find security weaknesses before an actual thief can take advantage of them. We'll be using the Metasploit framework, a powerful open source platform for developing and executing exploit code against a target system. Don't worry, we'll be using it ethically and responsibly, targeting systems that we have permission to test. We'll learn how to find exploits, exploit vulnerabilities, and gain access to target systems, all while emphasizing the importance of responsible disclosure and ethical hacking practices. And there you have it, folks, our whirlwind tour of 10 beginner-friendly hacking projects. 
We've covered everything from network scanning and password cracking to phishing and penetration testing, giving you a taste of the exciting and ever-evolving world of ethical hacking. Remember, cybersecurity is an ongoing journey, not a destination. The threat landscape is constantly changing, so it's crucial to stay up to date with the latest threats and vulnerabilities. If you're serious about pursuing a career in cybersecurity or just want to level up your cybersecurity game, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content on ethical hacking, cybersecurity best practices, and everything in between.